Hello and welcome to another edition of the Blackwater ETF Insight Series, where we chat with innovative leaders from the ETF and digital assets ecosystem. This video is part of the special series that we're doing focusing on capital markets globally. And today I'm joined by Pascal Capasso, who is head of capital markets for Southern Europe and Latin America at Invesco. So let's start with the first question, which is just basically what is capital markets and why is it so important to the ETF business? Capital markets is is actually a function, a team function that is very unique to uh, to ETF issuers. The team is centrally positioned uh, within the business in order to interact on one side uh, with the liquidity providers and the community of market makers and AP that support our products, and on the other side with the clients and investors. So we sit in between the sell side partners and the buy side partners. Um, we tend to be the uh, the central point of contact for um, all primary market uh, ETF activity, and uh, uh, we tend to work very closely uh, with the uh, uh, with the authorized participants, which tend to be our first the client, uh, the the guys that can trade directly with us, and we also our relationship manager of liquidity providers in order to create awareness of our product range as well as make sure that the products are well supported and are liquid uh, for uh, the end clients overall. Also additionally, the capital markets team tend to, uh, at least we do, uh, support the sales process uh, and uh, work directly with clients and the client trading teams um, to uh, monitor execution, help on liquidity, uh, and uh, also identify the most cost-effective way of trading uh, uh, trading an ETF. And you know, in terms of end investors and some of the things that they should be considering when actually executing a trade, what would you say would be the top, you know, three things considerations that they should keep in mind before actually mm. placing an ETF trade? In terms of the, the the top three, definitely the most important one is the liquidity of the underlying market. Uh, before pulling, uh, making any trade, it is important to understand how the underlying market's liquidity profile is, what it is, and uh, how it, 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 it behaves, and um, and then place the trade accordingly. Just to give some example. Uh, for, on, on this point, uh, if you look at gold, for example, the, the, the trading gold NAV may not be the best execution strategy for large size, because usually the NAV um, is struck at the uh, at the auction price uh, in London, uh, and that is most the most liquid point of the trading day for 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 gold. It's not like an equity an equity market, and so there are those type of considerations that are peculiar and nuanced of the underlying market that needs to be taken into account. And that is uh, um, case by case, depending on the underlying, and it also depends on the size of the trade. Um, then another uh, really important point to take into account is, the, is trying to align the execution strategy of the ETF with the portfolio management um, strategy and portfolio management investment strategy. What I mean by that is... Um, what we see most of the times is clients that rush to execute a trade at risk and tend to pay a risk premium, while on the other side, the, the investment strategy is benchmarked on the close on an index, and uh, they don't really need to pay that risk price. Um, and so a different execution strategy can be put into place, like an agency execution or a NAV execution, um, to align the execution strategy of the ETF with the portfolio management and also save some cost in terms of execution. So um, those things need to be uh, taken into account, especially when executing an ETF. And then last but not least, one thing we also, uh, we tend to usually um, mention to our clients and stress a lot about is to uh, really minimize the information leakage. What we really mean by that is, uh, first of all, when a client is asking for a price, is uh, usually best practice to uh, always ask a two-way price. Um, by asking a two-way price, uh, uh, the client is not revealing that the size to the broker, and so information leakage can be, can be minimized, and that can usually get a better pricing. Um, but uh, apart from that, also really select the um, the liquidity providers they are putting in competition, uh, and uh, it's not a 
uh, advised uh, to just blast the trade to 20 people, uh, 20 different brokers, and many of them are not, cannot be AP sometimes, uh, and they will see that trade. And so you, you're really leaking information out. Um, and that's where usually the capital markets team can really help in uh, um Talk with the clients and uh, and discuss uh, who is usually the best in a specific underlying, in a specific product, uh, and uh, and really cut out the liquidity provider that are not really supporting their product. So I know you cover um, Southern Europe and Latin America. What would you say in terms of those particular regions are the you know biggest hurdles um, for e- ETFs as it relates to capital markets within Latin America? Um, I, I, th- I think there is a lot of education that still needs to happen, and that is probably the biggest uh, the biggest hurdle. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, is mainly due to the peculiarity of the ETF market or ETC market in Europe compared to the United States. And obviously, in Latin America, being exposed to the United States, um, it, it is more familiar for them. And so they're more familiar with US listed products compared to uh, to usage products. The peculiarity of the European ETF market uh, with multiple listings, with multiple exchanges, uh, um, different currencies, um, really provide a great choice to investors on one hand, but uh, it also provides uh, um, um, a fragmentation that uh, doesn't really provide a clear uh, picture in terms of liquidity to many investors. And um, uh, this has led to many misconceptions. The first of all, uh, well, one of the first misconceptions that I usually get asked about, especially in Latin America region, is uh, the trading volumes in Europe are very small. That is true to an extent, I mean, if, compared to some of the largest US products. But in reality, when you look at the data, um, we understand, and if you look at the, the data that has been published uh, after MIFID 2, we can see that uh, only 25% of the flows go on exchange. And about 75% is usually traded in uh, uh, requests for quotes platform, MTFs, and uh, NOTC platforms. Now, obviously, there are devils in the details, uh, and uh, this is a common misconception that European market volumes are, uh, are small because. Um, when we really look at the at the numbers, then we understand that there is a lot more uh, activity, uh, a lot more trading happening in European products. Um, and so, what appears on the surface to be a very liquid market is it is not. And and so, the picture that has been drawn is not what it actually is. Then the second misconception is, uh, and this is also a question I usually uh, get when speaking to clients in the region, is the ETP usage market is illiquid when I compare it with the US. Uh, with the US counterpart to US products. And this is again is actually drawn, it's linked to the, the fragmentation that you have in the European market. One is the fragmentation and the second is the, also the way clients trade in here in Europe. Um, most investors usually tend to just look at the bid offer spread and the volumes that goes on the tape. So the volume that is traded on, uh, on the lit order book on exchange. Um, but that only gives you a very uh, partial picture of what the volumes are in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the ETF. So in order to really understand the true size, you, we have to look at the secondary market liquidity, the primary market liquidity, and also the authorized participants that are supporting a specific product. And so to navigate those misconceptions, uh, again, this is where usually capital markets can step in and uh, we do a lot of work uh, with our investors in uh, all the regions in order to uh, help them really navigate those nuances. Uh, there may be the differences between uh, uh, the way you can trade a U.S. products versus the way you can trade a European product. Pascal, thank you so much for your insights. I really appreciate For those of you who are watching, um, you can watch other videos like this on our website, which is blackwatersearch.com. And thank you again for watching.